Great art comes from suffering. That's true. We all lead relatively safe lives. We're fighting wars overseas, but you'd never know it from walking around Brooklyn. I've got an old friend at Bank of America. He said he'd take a look at your art for a new building they're opening up. They don't want my paintings. They want pictures of puppy dogs. Mm. You know, real life is bullshit. You spend all this time in art school, and then people think that you just paint for a hobby. I just had a meeting with a gallery owner. Oh. Yeah, he told me I wasn't dark enough. Fucking. It's not my fault I haven't suffered. You're always suffering. You don't actually have to lead a miserable life to be an artist. My landlord turned off my heat. Can they do that? I didn't pay my rent, so yeah, they can do that, I guess. And the man! Hey, Thanks for inviting me. You're my blood. I need to hang out with you more so I can stay grounded. Douchebag. Is that David Craze? Sit down. He's a homeless person. He's a famous painter. Ew. Unchain yourself from everything society tells you! What artists do is as important as anything else. Mom, you know how you always say that you want to support me as an artist? How can I help? I need someone to take some pictures. Who's a model? It's my mother. So you're saying I should blackmail him? It's your foot in the door. You'll see anything goes in this business. You're really beautiful. Stop. <laughs> Stop stealing. That is Connor Fontaine. He's really good at buying paintings. He's like real cute. I was actually hoping you'd take me to your studio to show me some of your work. Society is always against the artist because artists have something to say. If they present uncomfortable truth. Well, it's naive to think that you can do this without playing the game. It's a business. You son of a bitch. I can paint circles around that guy. That's true. You are just the most innocent person sometimes. Are you really ready to live in this world? an artist. Just because it doesn't pay me money doesn't mean it's not a job. That's exactly what it means. Um, all right, so who's joining us is uh, Olivia. Olivia, who's Kelsey. Kelsey. You know, when you see him, I think, but What's that? You'll recognize him when you see him, I think. Oh, uh, for sure. But I just want to make sure I get the names right. Um, and then there's, who else? Josh is Dan. Josh. I was going to say Josh, I promise. And, and what he plays? He plays Dan. Dan. You know, he's the guy who takes to uh, dance to rich kids, basically. Um, sure. And then Quinn, uh, Paul Cooper's coming on too. Paul, Paul, but Paul is the real name. Paul's his real name. Quinn is his character. Yeah. Yeah. He so and he was the one who was the photographer. Yes, exactly. Alrighty, got it. This is great. I. I uh, Okay, sounds good. I think we're gonna have a fun time. Um, I love you got your bed right there behind you. It's great. <laughs> well, yeah, it was sort of a makeshift. It's, uh -huh. I, I need to kind of clear it out, but it, it's kind of a pretty color at least. It's a it's very tight squeeze in here because yeah. I, I made this my, when I moved in here, it was very, very quick. Right. And I made it my, this room, my office, but my son was here for a couple of months so I had to get a bed in because I have like my couch is sort of a bed as well right where's your I son? was using where's he living your son where where is he now yeah is he in college he, he no no he's a little young for that he's still in high school okay and he um he's his he's he's here actually right now he's my ex, his mom rented a place across the other in Kingston, across the river, um, for the holidays. And oh. then I'm trying to, we're trying to figure it out because she has to go back to LA for a minute. She's on a series there, but um, on? you know everything's so up in the air with with the production. They don't know from one minute to the next what's going to happen because they don't really have any control over it. Yeah, no, I know. He things keep changing, you know. Yeah, no, I have friends who, uh, you know. Dealing with all that stuff too. What's the show? Yeah. When did you shoot paint? We shot it last summer. Oh, like 2019? Yeah. Like oh. I think June, July. I mean, July we shot it. I think it's like, you know, it's over. You know, it was Very good. I mean, well, you know, it was a TV pilot first. So. Oh, okay. Not the first, I mean, not the teacher part, but the, uh, you know, the first part of it was uh was you know it was like a half hour show 
And we shot that in four days back in 2017. Okay. I think. And then that went to Sundance. Uh, and then, you know, we had some, I had meetings about it, but we just never, never really sold. So, yeah. Well, we can talk about that. You know, I don't know. Maybe it's not a good thing to talk about if you, you talk know, about you, yeah, how well Sundance isn't always a, um, guarantee of anything you know well i mean this year is forget guarantees of anything so uh, it was also no i've had a couple of films i mean i've had that and i had price check was in sundance and that didn't you know. oh it was it okay because that was when you came on my radar i mean the film did and i tried at the time uh what the, it's got to be six or seven years ago right um paul is joining us yeah sounds good hey paul, hey, paul. you guys how are you you good pretty good good nice to see you. where are you paul I'm in uh, Rhode Island, actually. I have some family up here, so. That's right. Rhode Island representing, and, and Michael, you're- uh, I forgot you're I'm not doing this, sorry. Hi, Olivia, it's okay, Hi. take your time. Gonna... Where, where are you, Michael? I'm in the East Village. Oh, very good. I gotta fix this so it's gallery view, right? That's better. <clears throat> and Look good, Paul. Haven't seen you for a while. Yeah, man, it's good to see you, dude. <laughs> Uh, and I'm in the Hudson Valley right now. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. I was like screening through like farm roads to get here on because I was delayed a little. So you're across from Kingston. Yeah, I'm in uh near Bard College. You know where that is? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's yeah, kind of there like not too long ago. Olivia Hi. like spends time up there actually. Hey, Olivia. Oh, this is Adam. Hi. And Hello. You know nice to meet you. Sorry, I did loop in kind of early and then on the wrong device and that's what was that no loud. problem it's good to see you thank you hi nice to meet you <laughs> same here uh Olivia's yeah late, but she's but she spends time up in hudson i think or somewhere around there yeah oh, chatham it? oh chatham so that's further a little further east um yeah i'm not far from chatham i'm i'm, I'm about half hour or something like that i guess i don't know i, I was you? in chatham uh over the summer Late summer, I went there, or midsummer. I'm over closer to oh. Rhinebeck, that area. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. that's um, where we first started going upstate when I was a kid. Oh, yeah, Bullshead Road was our. We had like a country house there for a summer. Sorry to hear that. It must have been very bad, might very rough on you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello! I didn't realize all the people that are in here now. Also here. Hello, hello. Hold on, wait. I'm how do, I don't really know Zoom at all. I'm gonna do the gallery view. That's the way to go, I think. Yeah, you have your choice. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna see. Sometimes do I. I have... Okay. So I, I guess yeah, we're just waiting on Paul. Then that's fine. He can pop on whenever he's got it. Yeah. There we go. So tell. Let's 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 we could start right, or should we? Yeah. You know. Oh yeah, sure. He can pop on. It's um, um, uh, let's see. Uh, well, I'm. I we were actually just starting to talk about uh that 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 this was at Sundance. This was at Sundance Saint, as a pilot. As, as a pilot, so it was as episodic kind of or yeah, in the episode it was their first episodic thing that they did. It is that was, right? Yeah, last first year. block of the first year. Yeah, 2018. Mm -hmm. Eighteen. Yeah, yeah. 2018. So. It was a, yeah, it was the first thing. It was, uh, and it, you know, it came off good. But you know, it was, at least we had a chance to screen it somewhere because when we had the feature done, we never got to screen it really in front of an audience. So. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Um, now, I mean, I guess festivals are sort of the ones that can kind of survive this period are kind of figuring out how their next year is going to look. I guess. Um, so it, play, it played at the dances with films, which usually plays at the Chinese theater in LA. But sadly, of course, you got it during well, COVID. Well, virtually, I know. Yeah. The virtual, the virtual festival was. I mean, they did a good job, but it was still really weird. You know, hard to sort of deal with. Well, we lost, we lost Olivia. She's gone. She's uh... back. <laughs> I realized That's... my door was still open, and thank you. Know, you. I have roommates. <laughs> oh, I see. Very good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You are where, where again? Where did you say? You I'm went? in Los Angeles now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I'm originally from Brooklyn, but I'm, I made the move out West. Yeah. How's that going? How's it there right I'm, now? As a matter of fact. How's what? 
how's how's life there now for you um different i've i've sort of been remaining isolated since march so even when we were in like a second the second or third tier i um i never went out really mm -hmm. so just home a lot um working on my own paintings which i've been doing watercolor and i eat and i cook a lot bringing out my italian side and that's basically it <laughs> That sounds good. It does give you an opportunity to sort of work on skills that you always wanted to work on. It's just a matter of being able to kind of wrap your mind. If you can get past anxiety or stress and focus, focusing is what it takes. Because yeah. I found I've been able to focus on a couple of things I didn't plan on, which have really been a help to me. And then mm -hmm. if you can get a grip on it and get into that, uh, you know, rhythm with like maybe cooking for you or whatever it is, painting, uh, you, it actually becomes then a way of dealing with anxiety and stress because you can, it's a kind of cathartic to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I Painting, mean, it's been a huge, huge stress reducer. and anxiety relief during yeah, this. Yeah. 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 Um, so I focus on that, that I'm not focusing on myself. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, I, uh, what, what, what on, on, uh, well, there's Josh. Okay. Very good. Joshua Who plays Joshua Parkley Terrace. Hey. How are Hello. you? How's it going? Push the video button. Oh. <laughs> oh, dear. Hey, guys. Yeah. Cold. Cold? It's like pandemic winter stuff. How's and where doing? are you located, Paul? Where, uh, where, Josh, excuse me. You play Dan. Where, where are you located? I'm in, uh, I'm in, I live in New York, but I am currently at my in-laws place in Connecticut. Ah, whereabouts, yeah. roughly? Uh, they're in Westbrook. Okay, I don't know where that is, but that's okay. <laughs> I, I, you know, I have friends in Connecticut too, uh, but um, anyway, well, it's nice to see everybody. Thanks for everybody for agreeing to do this and for being on time and uh, hanging out. Take care. God bless you. We'll see you soon. <laughs> um so wait how did you so uh now i did not know olivia you're actually are a painter which is great quinn do you take are you a photographer or do you have any experience in that um i, I took some photography classes when i was in high school i mean i you know that kind of stuff i i play more music i think that's more my other artistic hobby but but uh, yeah no, no i don't have any experience really as a painter <laughs> okay no, or a photographer or photographer, for that matter. No. Right, right. Uh, and what about you? Uh, I know I'm going to keep screwing up. I, uh, Josh, thank you. Paul, uh, the, uh, oh, I called you Quinn. See, this is why I'm going to start now. Let me just do this for official. Then I'm going to uh, just cross out so I don't get the character names and human beings' names mixed up like I just did. OK, so Olivia, you play uh, Kelsey. Kelsey. Kelsey, got yeah. it. Josh plays Dan and Paul plays Quinn. Yeah. And the name of the film is Paint. And Michael so. directed. <laughs> oh, I was wondering why he was here. Is it a little uncomfortable? I yeah, feel much I better. Now. Uncomfortable. On the side corner, like. Well, I don't know what corner I'm on. You're on the bottom. Of the <laughs> <laughs> You're on my bottom left corner. <laughs> So Paul, did you do you have any um no no Josh, do you have any uh any any experience also in, in it with art? Is that Yeah. Um I did a lot in high school and then since I've sort of dabbled, but um Okay. Yeah, really just for my own edification. But yeah, it's always been something I enjoy. Right. So I'm beginning to feel like the casting was maybe based on you got your guys' acting skills. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> maybe as opposed to being artists act so you act so wait, let me get this straight, you acted as though you were artists that's that's what we did can you believe it they didn't yep. really have any scenes painting except for paul i think was the only one you see painting anything at the end so yeah right you right. have to pretend that hard yeah even when we had paul painting with spray painting and you just oh. saw his face well, you oh, see right, the making the photos that's that's doing making art Seen them, though. this is true yeah we, we never see the photos we never know whether they're any good i guess but although we, we see the painting of, of his yeah. mom which is, you yeah. know. We tried not to show any painting or any of the paint. I mean, in the end, we had to show a little bit of the paintings, but the the 
goal was to not show any paintings at all because it's I don't know I hate it in movies when you look at you know when you have actors looking at a piece of art and they say wow that's the best thing I've ever seen this is a genius and you're seeing the same thing he's looking at and you're like I don't know about that yeah it's never so, <laughs> so I just we tried to avoid that it's like the same if it was a music film and and they say that's this band's the next big thing it's a big hit and then you listen to the song and it's like Jesus right <laughs> I could see that's true. Uh, so it's not so much about process. What was the idea? You said this was the pilot for what was supposed to be a, a series? Yeah. If, if everything had turned out right and or had gone that way, maybe it did turn out right. But um, what was the idea for the series then? Just to see this, these, this community of friends and, uh, and yeah, their, their well, life around trying to make it in the, as artists? Yeah. That's exactly what it was. It was these characters trying to make it in the art world. Uh, there was more stories like Dan's Dan, Josh's character was, uh, you know, every week he would go and, uh, you know, the idea was he would, he, you know, he wanted to be darker. So at least at first he would go on adventures trying to be darker. Yeah. And, you know, the characters were like this. I mean, Olivia's story was pretty much the way it was mapped out in the, in the, in the episodes. I wrote like four episodes of eight. And I had the other mm -hmm. work planned out pretty well. And, uh, you know, so I cut a bunch of stuff out and then I tried to make it end a little bit because TV doesn't really end. Right. So, you know, that not was intentionally. Cool. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, what was there going to be an arc? So beyond what we saw or? Yeah, it would have been, you know, I think, in terms I, I think of the idea was that every, every, if, you know, you have these ideas and they're sort of fantasies that you have to have, but I think the idea is with it, they slowly go up the, you know, the, the chain of art. The artistic the ladder. ladder. The artistic ladder, thank you, Olivia. The, uh, you know, they climb up and eventually, I mean, there's a huge divide between where they're at at the beginning and where they could end at the, you know, at what level they could end. And, and also like one, you know, they're not all gonna survive. I mm -hmm. figured that Kelsey would probably be the one that was most successful in the end, but you know. Who knows? I don't think Quinn was ever really going to make it, sadly. <laughs> that wasn't the goal. Just forever living in your studio. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. <laughs> more and more bitter. <laughs> he's living in a dumpster by the end. He's, he's the true Oscar the Grouch of. I could, been, I could have <laughs> been that guy. I taught that guy everything he knew. <laughs> oh, well, man. Yeah. <laughs> It's so rare to see young artists portrayed in film. I don't, well, you know. I mean, there's many about musicians. I mean, there are artists too, of course. I guess I'm just talking about, you know, the sort of- uh, Visual artists. Visual artists, exactly, yeah. Yeah, I think um, generally art films are sort of biopics or things like that about famous people. I gotta imagine even though, you know, with the the, the level of, of um, what would you call it? Just um, number of, of of young artists who drop out of trying to make it has to be the large, you know, more than any other of the arts because it's it's like the least. Like what what's going on with paint though, as you show it, is how little support people get. It's like so it's so difficult, you know. I mean, if you're you're hot, I guess that's not the, you know, if you're like the hot young artist that's on the, in the gallery, um, you know, uh, culture or whatever, maybe that's an exception. But most people, I mean, imagine they have to drop, they just drop out based on you know disappointment or frustration. Yeah, I think well, they get jobs yeah. back then because what they you know they do is like you know they, they would get a graphic design job or something like that. Yeah, right. You know, that would have if we had a little more time, I probably would have addressed that. I think like actually in the second. In the second season, I had the idea that, you know, Josh's, Dan's paintings, that success somehow ended up like, you know, some guy came up to him at the end of, that's what that was what it was. Some guy came up to him at the end of the season. They said, you know, everybody hated the paintings, but he loved them and he worked for Absolute Vodka. And he's like, I see these paintings on the buses and the subways everywhere around the city. You know, this is going to sell vodka all over the place. And so that leads to him getting sort of a job in the second season with an advertising agency or something like that, you know, or some mm. crap design thing and, and see how he dealt with the corporate world a little bit. Um, well, were, were, were any of you guys um, disappointed or frustrated when it was clear like that this was now gonna be a feature instead of a series? Because the series could have been ongoing for 
potentially, right? I mean, I mean, I think that yeah, that would have been it would have been really cool to be doing a TV show of, yeah. of this. That's the thing; it's not too late. <laughs> I mean, they they make spinoffs for movies all the time. I hear so that. That's it's not true. a closed door, right. but also I think that hmm, lost my train of thought. Hold on, sorry. Nope, totally lost it. Totally lost it. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> If it Sorry. comes back, we'll... If it had been there, a TV uh, show. We'll... There was a good little gap between um, between when we were at Sundance with uh, with this and then and then when Michael reached out that they're, you know, so I think for me, at least, I was just happy that, you know, we could have some sort of uh, resolution to the story at all instead of, like, just this thing that we worked so hard on just floating in space as this unfinished whatever that no one was going to see. Yeah. Yeah. That that's thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. That's what you, she was that's what I was thinking of. <laughs> you said it a lot more eloquently than I did would though. So yeah, it's, it's nice that we were able to continue doing this at all and have the opportunity to just continue telling the story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hated the idea of I mean what we had was really good, I thought, and I didn't wanna I was in love with these characters and I don't know, I love these guys and I didn't want it to just go and be nothing so you know I had this I, I had it all mapped out pretty much so it did to take a while to write the script but I had some time and uh we had to wait for Olivia who was in the deuce a little bit but it was all worked out in the end mm -hmm. oh right 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 um I saw that mm -hmm. uh, uh, uh so what was the um uh, uh I what one thing I wanted to I, I thought was pretty exceptional was the sort of the, the 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 incident or the yeah the incident that sort of starts the story off which is and which I'm kind of ambivalent about uh you know talking about and and divulging because um it's it, it involves uh it involves Josh and Paul uh Josh asking Paul's character Quinn to do a favor for him which turns out to be kind of a favor for for the Quinn character in a, in a way. But it's kind of really like, it's like where the beginning kind of hinges on this, this concept for what he wants to do, which is pretty incredible. Which, so I don't know if I want to give away, but involves his mother. <laughs> so can we say? Yeah, I think it's in the trailer. Is it I in think, the trailer? I don't know, it's sort of hinted at the trailer, but I put a clip out about with that scene where he asks his So mom, it's not, it's not a, a spoiler as it were? I don't think so. I don't know. Well, why don't we just say spoiler warning and then we can yeah. talk about it. Right. It won't really bother me. I mean, it's not like a movie that's going to be like the twist at the end. Right. And uh, but OK, so 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 Josh, uh, his character asks Paul's character to photograph his mother naked because he well, he, he first you go you ask your mom if if you can photograph her nude. Mm -hmm. This is a very uncomfortable thing to even contemplate as a viewer. <laughs> you know, so, uh, but anyway, so but as an artist, she, she fortunately says no. Did you want to say something? Well, did, as an did, artist, you know, she, you know, it's not such a. Paul, did you have something to add? Wait, oh, I know. No, I was, the, I was, the show would be would be the you know that the artists live on this different sort of plane of what. They say. I I know that's true, but but the artist's mother, it would have been very disturbing if she had accepted it, but she sort of compromises because she allows uh, this character Quinn right played by uh, by Paul to to photograph her instead naked nude and then uh, then then Dan would use the photos to to paint from to use as a right mm -hmm. which is still kind of a rather edgy thing to do I mean this concept where did this come from first of all from the sick mind of Michael Walker I assume but <laughs> Sorry, somebody's texting. I have to start. But yeah, that's, uh, I don't know. I was trying to think of something that, you know, an artist would, I don't remember what that, that was the, when I had that idea, I knew that was kind of a weird thing to do. And, and the relationship with his mother would be like a, a fun thing to explore. Mm -hmm. Okay, who's pinging? Popular. <laughs> Not me. Sorry, I can't, if I, if I turn it off, then it's like, you won't, you won't hear me. I won't hear you. Anyway, oh, she's right. I think. She's yeah, I, it's a constant thing. I, 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 I've, I've still haven't learned how to uh, 
to deal with the uh, the text noises myself, so I'm not. Uh, I don't blame you, but. Um, um, well, you know, it brings it up. It's it's uh, as a thing about another as aspect to the, the the culture of being an artist. I again, in a way, like uh, what's what separates I think our uh, visual artists is that um, you know it re in a way it requires I think the most engagement from from people, their what they're doing. What do you mean? Yeah. Well. Um, it's it require it's a sort of a uh, it's an emotional response but it's also a cerebral response which you you require and and it's not uh, it it requires you to do complete interpretation many times to you're looking at a painting or at something maybe it's not a painting maybe it's a sculpture or what have you and as a you you would need to it kind of requires you to kind of think about what what you're looking at and maybe what significance it has how do you respond to it? You know, think about where, so whereas most things, they kind of out, lay it out for you. Well, I don't, I don't know. I feel like, you know, everything has that sort of, you know, movie or a song, you have a response to it somehow, you either like it or you don't, you know, and it, it, they hit you in different ways, you know. But you can't disagree that in a way the, the visual arts are the most, I, it, it's the, the I think it lives, most people don't feel confident when it comes to art it's not that they aren't intrigued necessarily but i think it's of all the arts it seems like where most people feel a little bit like out of pay like unless they you really immerse yourself in it you know yeah and maybe take art classes as another possibility but yeah i think you're right i think uh people have a lot of opinions about art especially when they don't know it you know and they think uh they, they don't generally like it they don't understand it and they don't really care to and they think artists are a bunch of you know good for nothings and paint anybody could paint that stuff i mean that was the point with the monkeys at the title you know it's like anybody could paint this stuff you know that's how people feel about artists and it's not i don't agree with it but that's the way i think a lot of people look at that um i sort of have like feel like um with the art world and the high flutinous that comes from it that that's why people aren't confident to break through in their painting because there's this like hierarchy of people in the art world that say what's good and bad like i follow this um this kid on the internet that does amazing pieces of art but he's called like callen scrob i don't know my dyslexia is kicking in it's an instagram handle but he does this cool like um resin paint spin art and he constantly shares people saying this isn't art my daughter could like my like three-year-old could do this like and he, they, people just keep calling him not an artist and it's like well if you can do it then why the fuck don't you do it and you didn't think of that you're not doing that this person is making these pieces and bringing col color to life and yeah maybe it's not Renoir or you know Rembrandt but it's still beautiful it's something that i would like to have in my home but yeah i feel yeah. like people have that opinion about art a lot you know especially things that aren't representational or you know they're a little bit more abstract right yeah, I, think, I think that the like that art world hierarchy is soon gonna be i think in coming generations it's gonna slightly go down a little more you're still gonna have the classics but maybe this generation of artists, you do get more multimedia pieces and collage arts becoming such a huge thing again. And people say that that's not real art, that you learn that in first grade. And it's like, okay, but I didn't think of this composition in first grade. Like this person knows what they're doing and they're putting it together beautifully. And yeah. I, well, I feel like Adam, you were sort of like, what I got from what you're saying is like, you're kind of talking about it being kind of the most open-ended in terms of like just open-ended in terms of like who says what is good and who assigns what value kind of right like is that kind of that is a definitely something i wanted to yeah touch upon as well yeah absolutely yeah um, and they, you know the 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 art world and i you know i know people or i've known artists or like art um uh what would you, dealers a couple of dealers and you know, there's a whole, I mean, so, so people feel the average person may feel a little bit intimidated 
when it comes to art, you know, yeah. and because it does, like I say, I said require, but you're like, you know, it's representational. I think that was a good way of putting it, Michael. But um, um, it's also uh, the culture around it. I don't think like your average painter wants to feel like they're operating in a, at a at a plane that is not accessible to anybody because you want your art to connect with people right on it you don't want it to be this this sort of untouchable thing uh, maybe i'm wrong i think maybe a successful artist might start get buying into that i don't know i i mean but there there so it, it, but the point is it's like um i sold wine when i years ago i many years ago i worked as a manager in a wine store i was sort of in between you know gigs and i just thought, let me just try this, you know, I had this opportunity. And what I found is a lot of people came in and they were very intimidated to ask for wine. They didn't know about wine. And, um, you know, it's like one of these things that is held in, you know, it's supposed to be a thing of taste, you know, and you're supposed to have, you know, be able to distinguish what's a good wine from a bad wine, yeah, et cetera, et cetera. So my whole thing was like, that's so stupid and such BS. I took it upon myself to try to really just make people feel comfortable and like, okay, just tell me what you like or what you're eating and try this out. And if you like it, you know, yeah, I don't, I'll I don't tell you why. Anyone, I don't think you'll find anyone in the art world that'll make you feel comfortable. You're right. They're very <laughs> snobby, very smart people. And they like to make it known. And that, but that's also how they do business, you know, part of their, their I, right. Theory. And it's also just to say yeah. like, this is good and that's not good. And, you know, that's, that's part of the job, unfortunately, but they're, you know, they, they definitely come off as, very entitled, smart assholes. Mm -hmm. And they, you know, that's the way it is. And I think what you were saying about artists though, you know, yeah, some artists wanna, I mean, yeah, you, you know, there's a, there's a purity of wanting to be an artist, which is expressing yourself and you don't care about the selling it. And I don't know, that's kind of a little bit out of fashion these days, but I think, you know, and it's fun. Like, you know, I mean, I make these movies and I try to do something different sometimes. And, you know, as, as I'm psyched, something's different, but then, you know, People are like, fuck you, what's that? You know, it's the stupidest thing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you try things and they don't always connect, but it's like, you know, that's what you, you were trying to do something different and that's what, you know, they don't like about it. And maybe, you know, as far as art or whatever goes, things, you know, they, they become appreciated after, after time, you know, they become a thing, so. Another thing, the uh, the and I, I, Dan, I want you to jump in too, because you as a, maybe as a musician can relate to, this idea of trying to keep yourself a little bit uh, at edge. I don't know if that's the right way to say it, but in other words, the, the film deals with some of the characters have come from privilege and that's another whole thing. It's like, do you need to be kind of desperate to make art or come from sort of a, a, a you know, a, yeah, well, desperate is a good word. Uh, you know, as opposed to, are you taken seriously if you come from a place? Now we know that a lot of very, very successful successful artists grew up very well off. So we know that there's no difference, that you can create art regardless. But uh, I know, Dan, do you have a thought about that? Because it, it's one of the things that's at least peripherally dealt with in the, in the film. No, I mean, that's sort of like Dan's cross the bear is sort of that, you know, and I mean, that's like sort of what, what his arc in the movie is, is, is feeling like, you know, and, you know, Quinn in terms of like, you know, hierarchy of needs, like does not have heat in his house. I right. do. So it's like, you know, how, you know, am I really like, do I have the right or, 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 you know, uh, everybody's telling me that that's, you know, that's sort of like the, that sort of the bourgeois like shell is like, what's, like making me feel like I, 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 you know, am not, you know, uh, I'm, I'm held back by that. Right. And I, I think that's like, sort of like with what his, you know, with the thing he asked his mom to do, it's sort of like trying to blow that up. Um, so I, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, uh, I, I think it's sort of like, does that mean if you like have you know have rich parents that you don't have some other kind of alienation or like some other thing to say like I don't think necessarily I think it's probably a different kind of thing to say and if it's like as interesting I don't know but um, yeah. Mm. Josh, Josh, you have a lot oh. of opinions about that though. You don't you don't tend to like that kind of entitled privileged it background. Doesn't. 
it doesn't interest me as much right like um but that doesn't mean that that's not a reality you know and i don't think that means that like that person doesn't get to like make things that reflect the the world that they live in to me it's like what is you know the problems i see in our world like does what you know somebody's who grew up with a lot of money is like expression of how they feel about their mom interests me as much as like what somebody might have to say about like something a little bit more immediately pressing in terms of the quality of someone's life like does it I don't know I mean it doesn't interest me as much but that doesn't mean that they don't you know have have some aspect of their soul to bear you know Paul did you did you grow up in uh, Rhode Island or did you grow up uh no actually I grew up in in St. Louis um, oh wow okay yeah. I mean, and I, and I live in New York. I'm just, I'm visiting, you know, my family, but I, I live in Brooklyn. Yeah. So, yeah, no, but I mean, I, I just sort of piggyback on top of that. Like, I mean, I think like, I don't know, from like a more, you know, musical perspective or something, you know, a lot of people say it's like, oh, you, you know, you don't want to write a song when things are going well. <laughs> you know, a lot of times yeah. the impulse that you have when you want to write or you want to do stuff, you want to create stuff is when, you know, it's the worst feelings in the world, you know, when you break up with somebody or when, I don't know, you know, you get fired or what, whatever, you know, you lose your job. I, I, you know, I, so, so on that broken, sense, broken yeah, heart, broken heart. Right. Exactly. So, but I mean, I, I think that there's obviously something to be said for that idea that it's like, you know, that, that kind of like real emotional pain or, or even like maybe political pain. Like if you think about like theater, like, you know, there's a lot of theater that happens in places where there's like totalitarian governments and stuff or like in Russia, right. you know, if there's sure you know if you really have oppression if you're really oppressed then that's that's good for your art scene you know it's good good to be an artist if you have that kind of um opposition in your life or something but at the same time i mean i think if you look like historically you have to have a patron as an artist you have to you know you have you got to have money you got to have some way to survive if you can't survive then you know nobody's gonna remember that you said anything or True. Or, or see what, yeah also, it uh, it doesn't take into account that like art, like painting or music, or songwriting or acting, any of these skills are a craft. And as you do it more, you get better not only at, at doing it, but how you inspire get inspire yourself and the rit and the the practice and the rituals you get into and to do it. And um, you know, it's 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 just uh, it's not all. And, you know, that's how it comes somebody who's done 20 albums and maybe it lives in a mansion, but they can still create a uh, fantastic, you know, music or whatever they're doing because they've developed this craft and an approach to it. And, you know, um, that somebody starting off just can't do so. Yeah, but those are pretty rare, even though, even among unless they're geniuses, there are some exceptions. Yeah, right? and it look like most, most musicians, I mean, yeah, Van Gogh. I mean, the Rolling Stones lasted for a long time, but. Uh, I'm not familiar with them, but they sound pretty good. But you know, there's generally there's <laughs> bands don't last that long. You know, um, like, did you watch that Bee Gees documentary? No, on. not yet. But I'm, so I tried cute. to get uh, Frank Marshall, who directed it, on the podcast, and uh, was turned down. So fuck, fuck them, and fuck the Bee Gees. <laughs> <laughs> you might do another movie. Fuck that, you know. The, uh, Kidding, I'm sure, he's, I'm sure he's watching this. To is she doing a spit take or is she uh, having a moment? <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> sorry about that sorry <laughs> sorry Olivia. it just made me laugh and then it was like i couldn't swallow for a minute and it's just understood well there's the nose next time just remember you can also just you know <laughs> so it's a duck which you could I prefer also... not to snot on camera but uh <laughs> yeah you know and that and that would definitely not get edited out as you <laughs> Exactly, and I wouldn't expect it to. I would probably <laughs> ask for it, actually. But. Sorry, Michael. Anyway, the Bee Gees thing was good. <clears throat> yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I was kidding, but I, not about being rejected, but about uh, I, I do want to see it. Uh, like I said, the music stuff, you know, like if you look at like ABBA, who is a huge band as far as we know, but they made all their big records in like the space of like four or five years, you know, and that was right. their career, really. So it's, it's having that kind of longevity of somebody like an Elvis Costello or somebody, you know, some of these bands, they hang around and they still work. It's funny because, you know, yeah. Just their first few songs generally that are their songs. Right, right. Um, 
Well, the name of the film is Paint. It's available, correct? Yeah, it's in VOD everywhere, pretty much. You know, Amazon, uh, iTunes, wherever else. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk about just before, I don't know, while we still have a little time, maybe, uh, do you want to just mention how you guys got cast or because I, I could have started with that, but it's um, I'm actually I would like to know how you decided uh, to cast these particular actors. Well, I got these guys because they were the best ones that came in to, to read. Really. Asked and answered. <laughs> Next, they, you know, they had <laughs> their perspective on it. <laughs> Did they not have a choice? I guess they showed up for the audition or what have you. So maybe, was it a up and uh, I mean, the real trouble for me is getting, you know, we do a low budget film is getting agents to take us seriously to get people to come into, you know, good actors to come in. So, um, and these guys all have great, you know, people behind them, at least as far as I'm concerned. Shout out to representation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's funny because it was like when we were doing this, it was pilot, you know, we were shooting a pilot originally yes and, uh which is a which is a sort of concept that's like it's not really a, you know doing pilots on spec is not something that's generally done so we didn't get i've known a few at, uh, but i know a few directors who do, are doing it especially now because you know for obvious reasons yeah well it's it's not a it's not an industry where they have an acquisitions team like movies where they you know they have studios out there looking for stuff to buy right they don't do that in tv really so it's, uh, I didn't know that at the time. But anyway, as far as the agents go, they were just not taking it that seriously. And uh, when we, when it was a film, when it was a film, when we started casting originally, it was during pilot season, so that was tough. And as soon as pilot season was over, then we started to get some better actors coming in for the other actors, not these guys, but but uh, no, these guys all were great in auditions. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> and they're great in the movie too, by the way. Thanks. <laughs> Well, um, what are you guys up to now? Can I ask, it, or is there, is it all just waiting out this next few months? And it's been a hard year for actors, at least as far as I'm concerned. It really has, How you know. Are you keeping sane? Like I feel like with actors, too, when you have other creative outlets. I mean, obviously, that at least for me, this is my main one because you know it's why I choose it for my career. But you know, we can't just do it every day. Like if you're a dancer, if you're a singer, if you're a musician, if you're an artist and that's your main thing, I mean, it's just so easy to pump things out or like be able to really be able to do it. But acting, it's like, you need the director, you need a writer, you need content, you need other people to work with. And like even doing auditions now, it's like doing auditions through Zoom and the lack of um, physical connection and mm -hmm. social yeah. interaction. Right. right, that's a big part of it and why you're it, probably- It's very inactive. weird having it gone for yeah. months. Yeah, and I mean, I guess there's parts of your, your you can tone and you can you know work on um, to be in condition, so to speak, for when, you know, Obviously, that condition, not just, I'm not just talking physically, I'm talking about all around the what, what it requires, what you requires to be a, 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 you know, competitive and working actor and all that. There's a lot you can do, but I mean, it's been a year. It could be another year before things kind of normalize where you're actually going out to, you know, but maybe not that long before yeah. things start. So maybe Zoom will continue and you'll get cast from that, I hope. I hope for all of you, uh, but it'll be nice if you guys can go to a to an actual uh, set or, you know. Well, acting is now um, the film industry is at least in California. Yep. Uh, what's that word? On pause. For businesses. Essential. A, thank you. It's an essential business. <laughs> well, like, that's gonna, that word? Yeah, but I think by I th actually yeah, but I think that's about to change. Like yeah, any sorry. any moment, any moment actually. Uh, Paul, Paul does a lot of theater and stuff, so it's, you know it's not missing that, Paul. Yeah, um, I what? mean, I mean, yeah, that that's been mostly all you know uh, auditions, you know, on Zoom and things, or you know, making tapes. I mean, I, I mean, obviously we were making tapes 
before the pandemic. You're talking I, about self, self, self tapes. Self, yeah, self tapes, self -tapes for directors. Yeah. So I mean, I, I guess more, maybe that's just maybe going to be more the way of the world. Unfortunately, I, I yeah, do I'm like such an in the room person. Yeah, I, I like just. I don't think it. Yeah, and I think that, that I think I think my guess is is that that there's an appeal to it because it's possible to use this technology to do those self tapes, et cetera. But that right. I don't think I honestly feel like you guys will be in you know in actually in-person types of situations very not before long because uh it's it's also it, it about energy chemistry etc and you just mm -hmm. you can get some of that of course and you can watch somebody's work you know but you also want them in the room with the other actors um well, i've actually done a i've did a not that long ago um a chemistry read through zoom <laughs> luckily i knew <laughs> the actress already, is that a thing so it, you know it was <laughs> Luckily, we had the chemistry. We're friends, but um, I can imagine if I didn't know her, it would have been awkward as fuck as hell. And <laughs> you can curse. Uh, I told off. It would be awkward. Frank Marshall as fuck. earlier. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but it, it was sort of strange. I didn't like pin her video, so it was also going between people for a minute. I'm like, oh wait. But the ways of the future. Zoom chemistry. You need to have people in the room just, I mean, for actors, because you have to talk to them and see if they're crazy or not. You know, I mean, like Vin, Vince, who plays um, Brett Wazinski in the movie, mm -hmm. he, he sent a tape in. I guess he wasn't in town. But I, I wasn't going to hire him until I met him, you know, until we talked a little bit. You know, he, he, was, he, was, he was great on tape, but, you know. Right. But if you weren't going to get him in town, you know, I guess you would have. Uh... Yeah. I always yeah. said if I was casting a film i would probably um stick a camera in the waiting room to see how <laughs> people are in between waiting and how they're prepping because you know you have those certain actors that are just like 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 they're reading the bible or something and they're just like so intently like saying their lines under their breath and then you have the ones that are doing absolutely nothing and you know and i just that's Wait, what that made me think of it's like i would love to just record people in the waiting room of like hmm let me see how you are not in front of me. Sounds like a documentary. You might want to. Did Ricky Gervais already do it? I'm just kidding. You get the camera in the in the casting office after the actors leave. And they're like, oh my God, what was she thinking? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh. Well, thank you guys very much. It was really. Thank uh, you. I, I, I'm sorry for my, um, I, you know, if there's like too many male names or something. I, I just botched it up a couple of times and I apologize. But I did watch your film. I enjoyed it. I made a point of uh, asking Michael to do this. And I said, it might be fun to get the guy, some of the cast together. So I appreciate you're all doing it. And you're very um, yeah, thank you. Pleasure. People should support independent film. And Paint is an independent film, as it turns out. And it's available right now on most of the streaming. Hollywood film at some point? Yeah. We were like, wow, this is independent. No way. <laughs> and you, you know, maybe uh, Michael, you need to, maybe Michael, uh, maybe uh, yeah, uh, Michael Taylor can uh, edit your uh, one of your future films. My Hollywood movies. Yeah. 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 He's he's, he's gotten too big well. for. Uh, yeah. us. <laughs> I'm kidding, but that's how Michael and I met through this mutual friend, but on, on, oh. a, street, on a street corner in, uh, <laughs> somewhere. I don't remember exactly where, but well, we met with Michael Taylor at a screening, and then I met with oh. Chris North. We met. Uh, oh, Reed. yeah, that's right, Chris North, who did the music right for Paint. Yeah. I almost forgot. Chris is a friend. Uh, yeah, uh, that's right. I forgot about that. I would run into Chris. Uh, on a, and any guys meet him, or he was just involved in the post part of the. I don't think they. Yeah, met. we met. Not the, we met. met the screening in a... Oh right, with the screening. Yeah, he always wears a hat. Maybe. Yeah. Remember, remember Does he have a soul patch or something like that, or? I don't know. It's a hat, please. I guess Michael Taylor always wears a hat. So. No. Generally, yeah. He used to wear a pork pie. This is uh, take notes, guys, because I know uh, you'll you'll want to refer back. I think I remember a pork pie at Sundance. Uh, he was at Sundance. He came okay. here. Okay. Yeah, okay. I'm like, wait. Yeah. He I came think. Over the house. I... He came yeah. over to the house. He was sick. I mean, he had some soup. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, I have soup. Oh. Uh, anyway, it's really cool meeting all of you, and uh, thanks for being so game. And I wish you all so much success with your careers, and uh, maybe we'll do this again sometime, and maybe in person.
That would be one. Maybe. Thank yeah. you. Cool. Thanks. Yep. Thank you, and happy holidays. Yeah, thank you so much. Holiday. Day. Right. Happy New Year, everybody. Yes. Thank you. Bye, guys. All right. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Thanks, everybody. Yeah.